welcome to Shakespeare with Sarah, where I break down Shakespeare for actors. Today I'm breaking down Cressida's monologue from Troilus and Cressida. Hard to seem one, but I was one, my lord. In this video, I'm going to talk about the context for the monologue, so what kind of comes before it, and some of the acting choices you might want to think about, as well as breaking down the meanings for you. So let's jump straight into the context. In this scene, Troilus and Cressida are just about to get together with the help of uh, Cressida's creepy uncle, Pandarus, or Pandarus, depending on many factors which I'm not going to go into here. Cressida has previously talked about how she actually likes Troilus. Her uncle's been trying to get her together with him for ages, and she's been holding off because she knows that men, once they sleep with someone, kind of don't value them anymore. And that's a good reflection of a lot of the themes that are going on in the play. So she's actually been kind of acting coy this whole time. She's told the audience already that she's just going to play it cool and not uh, show Troilus or tell him that she likes him because she doesn't want to give up anything and suffer the consequences, which I think is smart. So in this scene, she's telling him that she likes him, but she's also still not quite ready to express it. And that's the key to kind of understanding what's going on. Something particularly that you're going to want to think about is how is Troilus reacting when she says this stuff? Because it sort of feels like he should be interrupting her. And that actually can give you a little bit of energy almost to be like, oh, I don't want you to say anything yet and cut him off. That can give you energy to go through, drive through the lines. But also something that can help you connect to the character is if like, what if he's laughing at her? What if he's being super stoic and not giving anything away or what if he's just like chasing her around the room any of those are options and it's really important to think about like what works for you what feels right to you what's going to motivate you and also what's practical because if you are doing this as a self-tape you might feel the urge to move around a lot but it might not work on tape on camera if you're doing it in person you can certainly move you know away from him if he's feeling like he's getting a bit intense for you or towards him if you really want to admit how you feel and that can be some great movement work but with that just be careful that you don't end up wandering around so be really really grounded before you begin your performance regardless of whether it is in person or on camera I think the other big thing here that's important is balancing showing what Crescent is going through without resorting to really sort of pantomime reactions like oh, stop my mouth you know we don't want that we want it to feel truthful and real Cressida doesn't have to be a really sort of flimsy scared girl she can be tough and you can find your own version of her but regardless of how tough she is of course it's hard to admit to someone that you like them and I think it will really help you to think about what are her key fears here what is she really scared about happening what is she scared about happening in the future and what is she scared about happening right now just that he's gonna laugh at her or that she's gonna immediately give herself to him because that can be scary too so once you get a sense of kind of what her fears are i think that will help you determine what kind of character she is and also how much to kind of show her emotions not everyone gets carried away with their emotions and you can work with what works for you what just feels right for you but try to stay away from too much. <gasps> this stuff doesn't ever look good. So let's jump now into the breakdown. The language is actually not that hard. It's kind of on a theme. It's all sort of similar stuff. So you're gonna to have to make sure as well that you have variety in what you're doing. And thinking about uh, Troilus's reactions will help you with that. So the very first line, Troilus has just said to her, why was my crescent then so hard to win? Being like, why did it take so long for you to come around if you liked me this whole time? And she says, hard to seem one, but I was one, my lord. But what I want to break down for you there is what she's saying is that it was just hard for me to appear one. So it was hard for me to show you that I was one. Then she begins to say, with the first glance that ever. Now you should think about how is she going to finish that sentence because she cuts herself off. So she's basically about to say like, the first time I ever saw you is how I take it. But then she says, pardon me. And she kind of shuts herself down. If I confess much, you will play the tyrant. So this is her fears already is that as soon as I tell you this, you're going to kind of play me. Tyrant, you can take how you like, whether you decide that she thinks that he's going to 
kind of try and control her and uh, be the lord of the relationship or whether she just means like you're going to play me for a fool then she says I love you now but till now not so much but I might master it so she's sort of saying I've loved you this whole time but I've been able to be the master of my love and so kind of referring to that tyrant thing about that she's been the master of herself I think that's another thing that's important to her is that she wants to make her own decisions but then she says, in faith, I lie. In faith kind of just means like, no, for real, I'm just lying. It's, it's, a, it's a really kind of colloquial expression. She's like, no, I'm gonna tell you for real. My thoughts were like unbridled children grown too headstrong for their mother. She was trying to be cool and say like, well, I was, I was totally in control of this this whole time. And then she's like, no, nah, actually, no, let's just be honest. I wasn't, I was thinking about you all the time. My thoughts were going crazy. See, we fools. Interestingly, like, who is she talking about for we? Is it her and all women? Or is it her and her thoughts, for example? Or just humanity generally being in love, a fools? Why have I blabbed? Who shall be true to us when we are so unsecret to ourselves? So that's an interesting moment. You could potentially play to the audience or otherwise just play to herself as a reflective, uh, kind of reflecting on the themes of the play as well. It's like, who's gonna be true if, if I'm not even true to myself? I told myself I wasn't gonna do this. But though I loved you well, I wooed you not. So I, I was in love with you, but I didn't chase you. And yet, good faith, I wished myself a man or that we women had men's privilege of speaking first. So she's saying that she wanted to say something this whole time. And again, this reflects the themes of the play about um, how women are treated as well. Now she's kind of begging, even though she wanted to say something this whole time, she's like, don't let me say anything. This is difficult for her. She's really wanted to, I think keep her own sovereignty. She's wanted to be the master of herself. She didn't want to be the typical girl, I think. It's kind of a thing with Cressida. So she says, sweet, bid me hold my tongue, which is weird because she's like asking him to be her master in a way, like tell me what to do. Definitely some interesting stuff going on there with her. For in this rapture, I shall surely speak a thing I shall repent. So because I'm kind of getting carried away, I'm surely going to say something that I'm going to regret later. See, see your silence, cunning and dumbness in my weakness draws my soul of counsel from me. So that is a hint there. So he has not said anything, but that might be a case of maybe he's turned away from her. And she's like, oh man, like, how can you do this to me? See, like you're not saying anything and cunning and dumbness 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 means like mute like he's being clever about not saying anything is drawing more out of me because you're not saying anything how dare you you suck and then she says stop my mouth which i always think is just such a like romance novel line where it's like the man stopped her mouth blah 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 but she later says "Twas not my purpose thus to beg a kiss so Theoretically, she doesn't actually mean just like, come and kiss me so I stop talking. She actually just means like, ah, blah, please, mouth, stop working. She's kind of awkward in a way as well. It's a, can be quite a fun monologue. And it does actually feel, honestly, it's, it feels like Juliet. It's very, very similar. And at the end of that monologue, he does actually come and kiss her. So you might want to play, especially if it's a self tape, you could potentially have a moment where you just show kind of the arrival of like, oh, the surprise of like, oh, he, he kissed me, oh. And then the quiet that probably comes. Finally, she's been rambling this whole time. Notice that a lot of her lines, like a lot of her sentences begin in the middle of a line, which means she's thinking very quickly and she's moving quickly. Try and find places to breathe at the ends of lines where possible, and that will give you a sense of the energy that drives her forward and how fast her thoughts are moving. It's tricky to play, record yourself and check that you're not rushing. And that's all for today. Drop me a line if you have some questions or any requests. Otherwise, like, share, subscribe, help me get out to more people. I would really, really appreciate it. And good luck with all your drama school auditions and all your general auditions out there. Break a leg and I will see you next time.